Chris, what is our first main topic today? Our first one comes from Raza Hyder. Hey, John and crew. Today marks the 10th anniversary of Marvel Studios' The Avengers. Oh, my God. These days, we take for granted the notion of seeing superheroes from different franchises come together to take on an otherworldly threat. But when The Avengers first premiered, it was so exhilarating to see these six heroes learn to work together as a team. Looking back on it now, what are your memories of seeing The Avengers for the first time? And where does it stand 10 years later in your list of MCU movies? Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot for saying that in. And, you know, yesterday was a, a significant milestone. It was the 20th anniversary of Spider-Man, the, the first Sam Raimi movie, which is, that one's crazy to think about it was 20 years ago. We are at the 10th anniversary of Avengers. And whereas we talked about this yesterday, that, you know, it was really that first X-Men movie that, that kind of started the, the golden age of superhero movies. I would probably contend that it was the Avengers movie that established it, that established the new era. You know, it got started the ball rolling with the X-Men, Spider-Man, X-Men 2, but it was that first Avengers movie. I still remember where I was opening day. I, we were working for AMC. A couple of us in this room were working for AMC at the time, and it was opening <laughs> night of Avengers. We are at the AMC Burbank 16, their second most popular theater in the world, and I had never seen in my life those kind of lineups. I, I just hadn't seen it. Now, thankfully, we live in a more enlightened age today where we have pre-bought tickets where we can get pre-assigned seats. But still, at that time, I remember the entire courtyard, the streets around the AMC Burbank 16 were filled with like 18 different lines that were wrapping around everything, city blocks and everything like that. We also and, had a John, we also had those ABC news vans all over the place, remember? Yeah, that? there there was like ABC, C, oh. like all the network news vans were all over the place. So... We, we did, we went around, interviewed people, and we set up, because we were AMC, we set up a big news desk right in front of the front doors of the theaters, and we did like like it was the Super Bowl, and we did play-by-play -play talking about, you know, the, the fact that the first screenings of Avengers was about to happen, we had thousands of Avengers fans behind us, it was such an incredible day, and I remember me and Clark Gregg, who of course played Agent Coulson, uh, it was such a great thrill for me, I got to go into each theater because the movies were starting like five minutes apart in each theater. Like one would start at 12 midnight, one would start at 12.05, one would start at 12.10, blah, 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 right? So I'd run into a theater and say, hey, everybody, I'm John Campy with AMC. Thanks for being here. Woo! I'd throw out a t-shirt or two. I said, by the way, somebody special is here who wants to come and say hello to you. Agent Coulson, Clark Gregg is here. And he would come in and the audience would go bananas and nuts. And so me and Clark Gregg would go around to each theater and do that same little routine it was so great. But Were you able to keep the same level of energy for each theater? Oh, yeah, because I got such a kick out of seeing everybody get so thrilled and so excited that Clark was there. And But here's the, the key thing. It was about two weeks prior to that. I went to the El Capitan Theater to watch the first Avengers in an early press screening. And it became and is still to this day, in my opinion, the greatest comic book movie ever made and the most important comic book movie ever made. We, we You, me, and uh, Cody Miller talked about this on an episode of Best Movie, Worst Movie Once. But, like, the MCU was off to a strong start, right? We had Iron Man. Uh, we had Captain America, the first Avenger. And we had Thor, which I think is one of the most underrated comic book movies ever. And it was a strong start. But it was Avengers. It was that first Avengers movie that really established this is what the DNA of this MCU is going to be. You know, those previous three films were great. They were. But it was the Avengers that kind of set the mold that this is what an MCU movie is. This is what an MCU movie feels like. And it really, like I said, became the establishing movie that I believe opened up what the era of comic book movies are today. And as a matter of fact, if we go back now and look at the box office charts, Jonathan, let's bring that up. If we go back and look at the box office charts right now, 10 years later, you know how many movies have come out in the last 10 years? I'll, get, I'll tell you, a lot. That's the official mathematical term, a wow. lot. A lot of movies come out in the last 10 years. 10 years later, The Avengers is still the number nine all-time box office film. 10 years later. Only three comic book movies ahead of it, and they're all comic book movies that came out of Avengers, which is, of course, the prodigy of the MCU, right? We got Spider-Man, we got Infinity War, we got Endgame. That's it. Those are all the comic book movies that are ahead of it. And it's just what it did, and I still remember coming out of that theater for the first time buzzing and seeing all these jaded you know, skeptical film critics came out of that El Capitan theater with me, all like going, what did we just see? 
Like, what did we just see? And people like buzzing and shaking and like just couldn't believe what we saw at that time. Now, there are some people today that will say, well, you know, I go back and watch it. It doesn't really hold up as well. F that. This movie, like everything good in the MCU today comes out of that movie. And it, it, that's why to me it is the best comic book movie of all time. It is the most important comic book movie of all time. Um, and 10 years. I feel like it was just yesterday that we were celebrating the 10 year anniversary of the launch of the MCU with Iron Man. And now here we are talking about the 10 year anniversary of Avengers. But anyway, uh, that, those are my thoughts that I have when I think about that original Avengers movie. And, you know, when I think about people like yourself and John Schnepp would always say that you guys spent your entire lives imagining, could we ever see a movie where maybe the most iconic shot in comic book movie history that the one that was in the trailer where the camera spins around, you had Iron Man and Captain America and Hulk and Black Widow. And you know, they had all of them there and the, the camera spinning around. And I remember John Schnepp saying, I never in my life thought I'd see this. And I remember you saying something similar too, never in my life. So when, on the 10th anniversary here, Rob, when you look back on Avengers, what is the legacy of this now 10 year old Avengers movie? We want to take a second and thank the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. Now guys, you know, I love Manscaped. You've heard me go on and on about the Lawnmower 4.0 and mm, that body wash. I love it so much. And so we got to ask, guys, have you started your spring cleaning yet? The carpets need cleaning, the drapes need dusting, and your lawn needs mowing, gentlemen. And you guys know Manscaped isn't more than just one product. They have a whole lineup of products to help you guys feeling, smelling, and looking your best. And so Manscaped is proud to present to you the Performance Package 4.0, which is the only tool that you need to keep your boys looking, smelling, and feeling good this spring. Now, to start off with, you get the Lawnmower 4.0. Guys, we have talked about this. What is wrong with us? Why have we for so long been using these terrible tools that were never meant for cutting our hair down there? The razor clipper things on our electric razors. That's barbaric, guys. You need the Lawnmower 4.0. And then there's the Weed Whacker. You guys have heard our own Ray Aura talk about this thing. He loves using it to get that hair in your nose and the ear hair and then they offer lots of other stuff like the crop preserver it's an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer the crop reviver it's a spray on toner for your balls and of course they've got the perfect grooming tool for your face with the plow 2.0 the perfect razor for the finest shave on that face so guys get 20 percent off plus free shipping with the code campia that's c-a-m-p-e-a -E at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off and free shipping with the promo code Campia at manscaped.com. It's time to throw out your old hygiene habits and upgrade your life. Well, like you said, I, if you told me 20 years ago and said we would be sitting here in 2002 when Spider Man came out, even, even that, I'd be like, if you said, you know, if I knew you back then, Rob, one day there's going to be an Avengers movie, I would have said, John, you can't do that because nobody knows who Iron Man is. Nobody knows who Captain America is. Nobody, the Hulk. I mean, they know who they are, but you can't like, I can't imagine throwing them all together in one movie. Like, who's ever going to do that? Who's ever going to make a Thor movie? Who's ever going to do an Iron Man movie? What did I know? I mean, it was... And sitting in that theater like you, I saw it at the um, Arclight Sherman Oaks. Ah. And I was sitting with a bunch of jaded industry professionals and people like Nikki Griffin, who was in... She was the girl that they were racing over at the beginning of Tokyo Drift. Okay. I'd become <laughs> friends, friends, friends with her because she was in Femme Fatales. And... I was sitting next to her and um, uh, uh, Derek Hughes, who's been a writer on Flash and Arrow, and we were all sitting there watching it. And I have to tell you, it was like sitting with a bunch of little kids that had too much cotton candy. I mean, we were all just bouncing in our seats. I couldn't, like, I, 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 I sat there, I was like, I can't believe this is real. You know, I mean, you've got the shield helicarriers. You, you've got, <laughs> I mean, at one point, when, when Hulk picks up Thor and just, I mean, just one of the great well, and then smashing him around, with Loki, yeah. you puny god. And I, I'm just because it, it it balanced the tone. I mean, it was kick ass, but then it was funny because it was you know Joss Whedon. And I I I just when it was over, I'm like, I cannot believe I live in a world that this exists. And it was so much fun. And I have to tell you, it was really I had been buying hot toys before because I'd been buying them since the mid aughts. But it was the Avengers movie. It was, I was like, I gotta get all those characters on a shelf. 
Like that was the thing that made me like, I, you know, I was buying them, but I, I didn't want them all. This I is the real gateway drug. Yeah. It was such a, I'm like, I want them. And I did for the longest time in my office, when I was working on Star Trek, the next generation in a glass case, I finally got the whole, that whole team. You know, I had Black Widow and I had phone. I finally got Hawkeye and they were there. And every time I walked in, I'm like, God damn, that's so badass. It's just badass. I, I love these. And, and now I've got Dr. Strange. And now, I mean, and, and it's just, it was amazing. It was amazing. And you're right. I mean, look, I don't feel it's as good as you do. I think the beginning is a little slow with Loki and the scepter and all that. I don't care. By the time you get to the end of that movie, I'm just like the Battle of New York. It's unbelievable. It's, I, you know what? I'm going to go watch it tonight. I'm probably going to watch it again too. You know what the other thing is that was really impressive with it was that I know one of the big concerns myself and a lot of other people were voicing at the time is, how can you have this many main characters? You can't. You can't. But somehow this movie found a way to take all of these main characters, give them equal weight, equal time, each had a moment to shine, and it never felt like, well, these two were the real stars and these four were just kind of supporting. Right. Like they, it just, somehow, someway, they found a way to make it all work, which is incredible. Anyway, Chris... Ten years. Yeah, it's been like since three? that first Avenger. Three years old. You were three years old at the time. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Um, when, <laughs> what is the legacy of this Avengers movie to you? This is the first movie I saw in Los Angeles. Really? Yeah, I saw it at the ArcLight in Hollywood. Um, RIP, uh, which was really really cool. And I saw I saw it with Logan. It was the first movie we went and saw. We were still just friends then, but it was the first movie we saw together. And this movie just was. Did you kiss him? No, because we were just oh friends, right? Not that night, though. Come on, after no. we saw the Avengers, it didn't bring on that. No, there was no, there was no like, gosh, I need a Spider-Man kiss right now. Um, basically, this movie just made me so happy as a nerd because I, I was so lucky being a 90s kid having seen all these amazing cartoon versions of my right. favorite comics, yeah. right? I was so, so fortunate to have these amazing different like Spider-Man, X-Men, X-Men Evolution, all these awesome things. Of course, the Batman series, but I'd never seen really, really great live action stuff we had some really good things with x-men the spider-man films were great but seeing the avengers come together was this whole other level and that long one shot in the battle of new york is still one of my favorite shots in film of all time i think it's just so amazing and you know say what you want to say about joss whedon at this point in time but he delivered a really really great film uh, he did and you know i love age of ultron has also aged very very well to me it's got it gets better every time I every year that I watch especially it. because of how many connections it has to the greater yeah MCU but uh, I mean the casting you know I think that's the thing that the casting I forget her name the casting of this universe it's like they found the perfect people to play I mean that's what casting Was it directors still Sarah do Finn, yeah then? but I think so and it, you just you look at all these characters together and it's like delicious. That's yeah. the word I think. These movies are delicious. Like when you watch them, it's like eating your favorite cake. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great comparison. <laughs> and just... I remember for me too, one of the first things I said to Anne when I came out of the theater was, that is the Hulk I've waited my whole life to see. Dude. Yes. Like, <laughs> like so that... you are so right. Oh my God. That was the Hulk I had waited my whole life to see. And my one of my very few criticisms of Infinity War and Endgame is they kind of neutered Hulk. But, yeah. but, but whatever, mm -hmm. whatever, that's fine. But I but I do think I have to say that Infinity War and Endgame, you know, when people ask me like what are my favorite like double features, Godfather one and two, you know? Infinity War and Endgame yep. are some of the most to me, the most monumental entertaining, entertaining movies, fantasy films ever. They're epic. And it all began because what if it didn't work? Oh, I know. What if yeah. Avengers didn't work? Yeah. No, if it had been, if it had felt like the, some people were worried about it being messy or overcrowded or whatever, if it didn't work, the landscape, much like the first Iron Man film, right? If that first Iron Man film didn't work, that's it. There's no MCU. But if that Avengers movie didn't work, I think the MCU may have still gone on to exist, but I think it could have looked a lot different. Totally, dude. But, you know, the Chitauri ships, broad daylight coming out in New York City. and the, I mean... Come on. It was like every dream I ever had as a child mm -hmm. splashed up on the big screen. I mean, to me, you know, it was as good as the first time I had sex. Wow. Exactly. Well, then, when that happens, you let us know. All right, guys. Oh, <laughs> snap. Oh. <laughs>
John, you said it was on or Robert Meyer Burnett Day. I'm sorry about that. Okay, guys, question is for you. It's my dating life. What do you think about this on the day of the 10th anniversary of the first Avengers film? What do you guys see as the legacy of this movie? Whatever you guys think, jump on down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.